Hello everyone, how's it going? My name's Adam Marie Post Vox, and Windows 10 Anniversary Edition has released today. It's rolling out in waves. You may not have it today, you may not have it for a couple weeks. It is coming out in waves, and there's no specifics, of course, as to who gets it first. I only got it halfway through the day here. I was gonna walk you through some of the basics of what is being or what has been changed after the update, but I'm already getting uh, Windows Defender crashing. So just in case I don't get this pop-up again, uh, Windows Defender does have a new icon that's showing down here in the system tray. And yes, everything's really small because I'm at 4K and I cannot enable DPI scaling or half of the little fresh pop-ups for what's changing will go away. So I, I apologize. Uh, but Windows Defender has a new icon and it has just saying, hey, Windows Defender is your free antivirus recommended by Microsoft. And you can get automatic protection updates and settings and stuff like that but by leaving it open and then browsing the store i somehow crashed it so it's probably going to close oh nope it's still going all right we can turn on the settings updates and you may see here if my recording's working properly they have a new user access control pop-up which hasn't really changed since like windows vista and i realize my face cam is very dark here i apologize uh, but they haven't changed the user access user access control pop-up since like windows vista and so now it actually gives you a much clearer understanding of what's running and why, and you get a lot of information here um, before you tell it to approve. So that is really cool. And then you can just turn on that and you're good to go. So Windows 10 Anniversary is a big, huge update to Windows 10. And just a couple notes on installing it. It does install through the regular Windows update. It will just be rolled out to you in an update, but you will need five gigabytes, five whole gigabytes free on your C drive. And it moved my shortcuts around. Also, once you update it here, I'll just take a note. It does move your Edge, uh, Store, and Explorer icons. It resets them back at the front of your taskbar here. I didn't have those two on my taskbar at all, and it moved my Explorer icon around here. That's annoying. And it reset my panel widths. Yay for things getting reset. It also reset my default audio devices. That was annoying. Anyway, you will need five gigabytes free on your C drive because it needs to download five gigabytes of data for this update, so keep that in mind as I had to spend quite a bit of time clearing that out. And then it takes a little while to download, it takes quite a long time to prepare to install, and then it goes through the normal upgrade process showing you the, we are upgrading your PC and we'll restart a few times screen for a little while. It took quite a while, but eventually it did get installed and here we are. So there's not gonna be a whole lot of visual differences that you'll see here. You'll see over here on the far right, we now have a list of all of which should hopefully be the Windows notifications. I don't, I, I haven't gotten enough to fully test that, but it still has your typical mail stuff, but it's the Action Center is back here, but with like actual notifications here, which is kind of cool. I'm just gonna say clear all for now. And then the Windows 10 or the Windows Defender upgrade, like I said before, there's supposed to be a new Skype. Uh, I'm not gonna show it because everyone freaks out when I show my Skype, uh, but the default Skype for desktop client is not different. But if you go to the store and search for Skype, there is Skype preview here, which I'm thinking is, which looks like the new Skype client, but they, uh, they haven't changed the name off a of preview, I guess. So I'm going to go ahead and install that and test that out for you guys. The store itself looks about the same. If you were unaware, they have added Facebook and Facebook messenger and like Netflix and a couple like actual direct supported apps, which is pretty cool. Okay, cool. We get a little notification down here for Skype preview just got installed and it does give me the notification history here on the right. So that is pretty good to know. All right, so this is the new Skype, which is supposed to be far improved. There I am. And yes, that is a nickname. It's not my username, so don't yell at me for showing it. Start a conversation. This is a test. And all of this is syncing over here on my desktop client version as well. Although if this is good enough, I will actually stick to this. So it's got a dark theme here. This shows your contacts. This shows the bots, because they're all about bots now. So you get a Bing images, Bing music, news, Getty images, hello stranger games, Mitsuku, Murphy, summarize, whatever. Let's dive into the settings here. So you get notifications for instant messages, call settings. So these look like the normal settings from Skype, just kind of displayed more clearly. All right, so there is a light theme. Let's re relaunch Skype here. Skype preview. Hopefully they changed that name. Okay, so this looks ah, it feels a little blinding now compared to the other version. This looks a little more like 
the desktop Skype. It's supposed to be new and improved and have a lot of cool stuff. We'll see if it's actually any better. So you do have a light and a th dark theme, which is always good. Accessibility options and proxy settings and notification settings. So this is probably what I'm going to switch to. Do we have a system tray icon? We do not. That is a minor annoyance. We only have the system tray icon for the desktop Skype. Uh, so that will take some getting used to. But this is the new Skype. And then, like I said, it brings the Edge Store and Explorer icon up to the front here. And Edge is getting extensions. Yeah. You now get extensions for it. And you can pin tabs for quick access. So if I go to, like, um, lifehacker.com, let that load up here. It'll ask you if you want to say it, save it as your default. No. Hell no. Oh, thank you. No. Thank you. No. If we right-click the tab, pin. Oh, hey, that's cool. And then there are extensions as well. You can get extensions. Oh, straight from the Windows Store. Okay, so that is pretty cool. Ad block, OneNote, Amazon Assistant, Pocket, Mouse Gestures. So, not many extensions so far, but more will probably be coming. There's a couple tablet-based ad or upgrades as well that I haven't, I, I can't show off since I'm on a desktop, not a tablet. Okay, so the Windows 10 or the Windows Ink workspace is actually pretty cool. And so I wanted to go ahead and show it to you and show you that if you right click the taskbar, you actually have quite a few more options than usual. It's a much more expanded view than the normal Windows 10 one. You have access to settings. You can automatically stack or cascade your windows. Uh, you can tell it whether or not to show the touch keyboard button. You can just disable that entirely even if you're on a touch screen surface. You can show the Windows Ink workspace button. You can show the task view or hide the task view or search buttons which were right next to the start button. And then you have your normal toolbars options. But if you enable the Windows Ink workspace button and then it, pull, it pops up by your clock here, you then have access to go ahead and open up sticky notes and start drawing on them if you have a pen. Sketchpad, which you can start drawing on and just do any score. It has a like pre-made sketch you can start working on uh, and you can use your mouse or a touch screen or drawing tablet for that. And then screen sketch, which automatically takes a screenshot of whatever's on your desktop and you can start annotating it, which is really flipping cool. So I just wanted to show that to you as well. The start menu does look a little different here. I don't know if you can really tell, uh, but compared to like my previous videos or whatever, it's not letting me resize it anymore. I can go vertical. It won't let me go horizontal anymore. Uh, we've got a three bar button up here for pulling up a whole list of this. Function wise, it's the same. Like this is what it looked like before, but the way the programs are displayed is a little bit different and a little more streamlined, although we can't customize it as much. And then we've got all these icons over here, which you can bring out with the three bars icon. So that's a little different. And then we're getting update notifications. Those aren't sticking in the action center, annoyingly enough. So not a whole lot of third party integration yet, I guess. And then, oh, I don't know if I mentioned this at the start, but 7 plus taskbar tweaker is broken by this update, Update, but they do have an alpha version available. I'm going to go ahead and download it. Oh, you, okay. Only donators get the alpha version, but they, they are updating it for the upgrade. But if you had the seven bar taskbar tweaker, which is what I use to like make my icons smaller and more compact and things like that, it won't be functional again for a little while. Oh, one other cool thing is that the calendar is now a lot more integrated here on the taskbar, which is fairly cool. So if we pull up settings here and go to system, notifications and actions, then you can, you have a whole huge list here of notifications that you can hide or unhide. So you can tell it to hide notifications when you're duplicating your screen in case you're like recording or sharing with someone. Hide notifications and apps from other senders on the lock screen. I'm going to hide them on the lock screen actually. Oh, wrong button. Lock screen. Get tips, tricks, and suggestions as you use Windows. You'll probably want to turn that off. And then you can go individual program by program and enable or disable notifications, which is pretty cool because every once in a while there's just an annoying program that keeps spamming you with notifications, like Whatsy, for example, um, SteelSeries, I don't want that since I don't use that anymore, TeamSpeak, I'm going to turn off for now, DLC, I'm going to turn off, WD Quick View, I'm going to turn off, so you can enable or disable specific programs to show you notifications, which is pretty slick. You can now set a dark mode for Windows 10 store apps, if you go to personalization and colors. You can actually set like dark mode settings and things like that, which is 
pretty cool. Automatically pick an accent color based on my background. Light or dark mode, which can make them easier to read for some. That's just too much for me. <laughs> Show color on the title bar on or off. Actually, I want that on, I think. That's kind of cool. Show color on start taskbar and action center. Yes, definitely want that enabled. And then you have high contrast settings, too. A little bit more customization on that front, which is pretty cool. I like this title bar now. I like how that looks. You now have Bash built into the command line for some Linux subsystem, subsystem goodness. And then you also have uh, Cortana enabling cross, cross notifications with your smartphone, which I may get into a future video. But this is what you can expect with the Windows 10 anniversary update or just like an average user. If you have specific questions of what you'd like to see videos on, leave me a comment down below. This will be a double upload for the day and I still have normal video going up on Wednesday that I can't interfere with. Um, but I will be getting a couple videos up over here. There's not a whole lot to make regarding the Windows 10 update, but I wanted to go ahead and get a couple things going here, and I will try to see if I can do a second video on the Cortana stuff as well. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash the like button, get subscribed for more awesome tech videos, come check out our Patreon page where you can contribute to free educational technology content like this Why a small monthly contribution, get early access to videos, get to ask you know more direct questions, things like that. Welcome Angel. I forgot his username already. I do apologize, but Angel just joined the fold of Patreon with the $7 contribution. I greatly appreciate it. And yeah, hope you enjoyed. See you in the next one.